All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News Massive Drama. Yesterday, as a major patch update comes into effect, with Sky getting a severe nerf to such a degree that she may be out of the meta entirely. Lots of reaction to this, whether the change is good or bad, but mainly from the pros as to the timing of this move. Sky has been clearly very strong for some time. If Riot wanted to make this change, they could have done so months ago rather than just before the season is due to start, especially on the challenger side. But this is certainly also relevant for the main VCT. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Just so much to get into. Firstly, here from Ethan, these Ascension qualifiers will be more entertaining than VC reckons because, you know, from NRG's perspective and from what we've heard as well, loads of these teams in Tier 2 are incredibly strong. There's no secret that the likes of Oxygen Esports, the Moist Chobify, what they did the other day to Cloud9 and 100T are very good teams. And if they were in the Pro League, if they were in the VCT, they might well be very competitive. So Ethan says that actually what you want to be watching this year is the Ascension qualifiers because those are going to be the banger games because um, as Ethan says tier 2, 3, 4 and 5 NA Valorant has been giving us the business for weeks now saying that you know NRG might not be doing so well in their practices and realistically it's these other teams that are doing particularly well. We actually did see Platchat came out with this so FNS joins the guys to come up with their rankings for the America side and um, pretty interesting I mean look EG at the bottom here I actually think this ranking is pretty good I just think the top end is um, is actually quite difficult to say. The rest of it I think they've done a reasonably good job with EG at the bottom for now we still don't even know their roster so I guess we have to give that a grain of salt then MIBR crew Fury are probably about right. G2 I know people are really rating G2 it's gonna well I'm intrigued to see right because I think the best challenger teams on paper should be around about here and G2 of course last year were a challenger team but then again we've just seen G2 which was the guard win ascension and now we've got oxygen and you know Shopify moist Shopify beating comfortably teams like C9 and 100T so G2 could definitely be better than this but I think that um that's not a bad analysis 100T in sixth cloud nine in fifth is you know kind of where I'd put them right in the middle of the pack but we saw, again, we saw them not played so well the other day in that uh, in that lovely Tarek Invitational tournament. But I think the top four teams here are about right. I just think you can probably do this in a number of different orders. Loud here at fourth, and yeah, I think I'm inclined to agree that Sen, Lev, and NRG should be the top three in, in some way or another. But um, yeah, NRG first, given no evidence, is tough to say. I think Lev could have been almost like comfortably considered the best or right up there if they didn't go through all that drama over Christmas, getting rid of a player, bringing in Com. So um, I think at the top end of the league, it's really interesting to say. And NRG are like super unproven. Like on paper, they're really good, but you know, very much unproven compared to Sen and even Lev that have done things in the off season. So anyway, that's what those guys came up with. Of course, you know, FNS was involved. So maybe that's why NRG found itself on the top ropes here. There was also another kind of update here from Afi just on, well, she was working for Riot very briefly and then she she was going to let go, unfortunately, with the layoffs we discussed yesterday. But apparently it wasn't just like they're making layoffs from various divisions to cut things down. They were like entire divisions they were getting rid of. So she discusses here like a player management division or discipline here, which has just been like eradicated. So that does not necessarily sound like a good sign for the immediate term when you've got, you know, a player management side getting completely just destroyed by Riot's um, hiring and firing processes. So there was understandably lots of discussion about this and why you know she wasn't happy about the way that things have been dealt with but other controversial changes coming from Riot no doubt involve Sky so this was the big update of yesterday the 8.01 patch update with Sky coming through now a few other things have changed as well on some other agents but nothing really as substantial as this Sky has been known to be a very strong agent now for a long time and to be honest I was expecting a nerve for a little bit of time but given the fact that that didn't happen all the way through Christmas through January you might have expected that they would leave it for the start of the season. But no. So these are the changes. That basically the flash, right? The guarding light, the guiding light, no longer regenerates. That is a massive deal, right? For an initiator especially. To have a, like one flash per round is... I think a massive deal. Like, to only get one, like, that nerfs the character substantially. This is the other one that's annoying people, really. Okay, the ultimate seekers show a warning towards targets, which also is another nerf. This is the other one that's really getting people annoyed, though, is that the, the flash will now automatically activate. So, fake flashes can no longer be a thing, right? And it was always interesting to see the better Sky players, the better pros using Sky to throw in a fake flash every now and then. But now that's just not possible anymore. Like, if you're forcing only one flash around, it doesn't regenerate any longer, then is it really necessary to also add the second part of this as well? I'm not really sure. Personally, I don't really think so. It just feels like it's a way for Riot again to... Uh, 
lower the skill gap to some degree. And this is the frustrating part that the pros are getting into. And this is only the first piece of the frustration, really. But as Zelsa says, I used to think Riot was smart about balancing changes. But recently, their solution is just overtune several agents to see if they're played, such as, you know, Gecko and stuff like this. They don't get played. So just destroy the meta agents to force agents that they thought were good, which is probably what is going to end up happening here. But the other side of this, of course, as well, is that, you know, what is the end goal of this? Is it to remove all skill expression from all abilities? We saw there was some, you know, controversy when the smoke grenades, they added, what was it, like one and a half or um, like seconds from the end of the smoke. It will show the, um, like, it depends on the smoke what it exactly looks like. But you get those little, like, triangle things that appear on the smoke when it's about to fade so people know when it's going to go. And a lot of pros said, look, that shouldn't exist because it should be a timing thing in your head that you should have to know. And, like, I don't really think it was a massive deal, but it does feel like, again, removing the idea of a fake flash just for seemingly no reason does reduce the skill gap right and or like at least it reduces the amount of skill that can be on display with the particular agents and even Ali here goes on to say that you know I believe she's like a, a full-time sky main and you know talking about how they're just so bad now and now they've been nerfed fake flashing has got and basically just gonna quit Valorant because it ain't looking so good anymore so that's one side of the argument of course is whether the change itself was justified and maybe you know in part it was Sky was very strong but um as Ethan says Gecko is also very good you know like the Gecko buffs that have come into play the way that they've made his agent work initially and as Ethan says meanwhile Gecko has a flash with 13 times around which marks their location you know massive Molly and a literal sixth player that can plant and defuse the bomb and um, obviously the shark thing as well that he's got. So, you know, Ethan's like, look, Gecko's now going to be meta, right? And maybe this is Riot's way of saying, look, Gecko's actually good, guys. How about you use him instead of Sky type thing? And that is probably going to be happening now, to be honest. But the thing that really annoyed people, in addition to the fact that maybe the changes are bad, which is probably true, is just the timing of the changes. We've heard Chet and others talk about for a long time now. Even just we saw the other day when the changes are happening to Breeze. They're reopening that hallway. That's happening now. That's not happening several months ago. That's happening like right about now. Now, I don't have too much sympathy for the players here because I think it's a natural thing in esports. You've got to be an adaptable player. Like, um, you know, if, you, if things change in the game, which they quite often do, you've got to learn about them quickly. But I think the idea that they have been practicing for literally months at this point, these teams on the old setup, and now right before the season starts, Arts, the game is going to be quite substantially different. The compositions are going to be different. Everything you've practiced in terms of compositions with Sky for the last several months may now no longer be relevant. Breeze is now different. Icebox is now back in. Like, there's so many changes happening before the new season that arguably could have been made four months ago. But um, no, they're happening right now. So Chet does respond to Ye here, of course, NRG coach, and says they just keep making things easier for the noobs. What is going on? And um, as Eric says, uh, Doom Bros, of course, as he formerly went by from Navi wasn't Sky the most noob friendly agent anyway, being a crutch for teams like Viper and Smoker. But um, Chet says, Look, the abilities took skill, and I don't care if they nerf, just why is everything pouring in now? And apparently, there's still another patch, right? There's 8.02 coming soon as well. So, as Boaster says, and all the pros I think share this opinion really, the season's about to begin. And for the pros, it's bad, but it's not even like that bad, just because their season starts in what, like three weeks or so, three, four weeks ish, middle of February. Whereas for the challenges guys and game changes their season starts like right about now so all the practice they've done not fully out the window but changed substantially and as Bosa says yeah really happy that we changed the meta this close to the season and as Flyer says as well for Moist Shopify glad they waited until the very end of this eight months off season okay slight exaggeration but to be fair for the challenges guys this isn't even far off the truth to make changes like this Riot has been really cooking lately with these in-game and schedule upgrades so I think it's the schedule just getting the most to people, really. So Chet then kind of doubles down on this and says, can't wait for patch 8.02 where they make the game Pal World. And um, next year, I'm just going to start scrims one week before the season starts because, like, screw us, I guess. All the pro and all the pros time. No replay system as well. This is the other thing that people have been asking for for a long time. Certainly the pro players have is a replay system coming to the game. It will help the pros massively. It's obviously um, been talked about for a long time. But with the layoffs they've made, and, okay, maybe that won't affect the development of um, the replay system, but it quite 
quite possibly could do. And this is the point about wasting the pros' time. They've played for months now, and now the game is going to change substantially, and it's going to change again in a couple of days as well, right before the season begins. And then Chill obviously doubles down to the fact that there's only five matches per split. That's a good idea for a company that's been at esports for over a decade. So um, lots of criticism, but even from, you know, the pro side is bad, but from the challenger side, it's arguably also a big talking point, because as Imi says, T1 guys are, you know, pissed at these changes for good reason. Just imagine being a game changers player. Qualifiers in three days, NA challenges qualify soon. What about if you're in the VCL? Like the GC qualifier probably had too many people for the tournament clients. So, um, you know, surely we knew Sky was overpowered four months ago. We could have just gutted her then. But, um, and that seems like fair analysis to me, but of course, that was not the case. So very much interested to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Just one final thing to mention, if you guys don't know, I'm in Boston for the next few days for Call of Duty event. So um, the videos will not be at a couple of the normal time because it's just like, it's not really feasible for me to make a video and upload it by 7 a.m. my local time now. So the video is going to be later. If, um, you know, some days they might not have to happen. It's going to be, yeah, it's a bit tricky timing wise, but we'll try my best to make it work. And yes, there was so much drama that we are still grounded anyway. So hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.